May 3rd is a very historic day for anybody that has an interest in weather and certainly for the people that were unfortunately impacted by a major tornado outbreak on May 3rd in 1999, 25 years ago, this outbreak that impacted a lot of the planes in Tornado Alley also spawned the strongest tornado still to ever be recorded. You see it right there, max intensity of the F5 Bridge Creek more tornado and there's been several tornadoes that have gone right through this same exact area we're going to take a look at that later on in the video but nonetheless doppler on wheels the radar indicated uh, measured estimated winds of greater than 300 miles an hour that's good enough for the strongest tornado ever recorded it's also still the record holder for the strongest wind ever recorded on earth now again we could have a stronger wind but we're talking about in recorded history the length of this tornado was on the ground for 38 miles and the width at maximum was about a mile wide we're going to look at some radar imagery now if you want to see some videos of this monster tornado i'll have that in the end cards that pop up the end screen at the end of the video that you can click on and watch so stick around for that Take a look at some of these radar images here. This is from the National Weather Service. Certainly, radar technology has come a major way. The resolution has improved greatly, but this is what the radar looked like as this thing was starting to really ramp up as it got into its strongest thing. You can clearly see the iconic supercell the hook echo right there there's the debris signature popping up the debris ball as it has been coined there it's the re higher reflectivity right where the tornado sits unfortunately picking up a lot of cars people's homes other things that are going through for perspective here here we go there's newcastle there norman oklahoma is over here and then more is hidden in the yellow here in the forward flank downdraft as we call it getting pelted with some very heavy rain the hail is over here in the darker reds there's oklahoma city i want to show you again as this thing got closer and moved through more of course this is where we did have some of that f5 damage found from the national weather service there was one area northeast of bridge creek uh around newcastle and then there was another area right through more and you see that debris signature the debris ball right there the higher reflectivity that white uh, being picked up there as it moved through more and that's one of the more sobering radar images you will see as a meteorologist or anybody that can read radar imagery because you know what it just did you know what it went through you know how many lives that this storm unfortunately impacted but again here is the town of Moore right there and there is a debris signature still a very very strong tornado right there as it moved through the city of Moore eventually working its way up and kind of button hooking up towards uh, just to the east of downtown Oklahoma City. We'll take a look at uh, the paths of those storms and all of the storms included in that 1999 tornado outbreak. This is one of the crazier velocity signatures that you will ever see. Again, we use the velocity of, uh, of this mode to see. We can estimate how strong the wind is, and we can see if the different hydrometeors, the rain, or anything in the storm, the direction that the wind is going is we can determine if there is rotation. Well, there is certainly rotation in here. And let's get back to the perspective again. This is, here's Newcastle, right there where X marks the spot. There is more. Again, the path came through right about like that. There is downtown Oklahoma City. But there, right here, is our big time tornado vortex signature, TVS as we call it. And the reds butted up to the greens, and we are maxing out the scale right there. What the green means is it's the wind going toward the radar, the red going away from the radar. So there is your circulation just like that of the very very strong again likely at this point f5 tornado coming uh, out of bridge creek moving toward newcastle and then or moving into bridge creek i should say uh, also moving towards newcastle and then eventually into more where it went on to produce that f5 damage so again talk about sobering that is one of the biggest images the most sobering images that you can see Several tornadoes, again, that was just one. Of course, that one has all the publicity, but there were a lot of other tornadoes that impacted a lot of other people's lives and a lot of strong tornadoes at that. We had an F3 tornado just to the east of the Bridge Creek and more one. We had another F4 uh, north of Oklahoma City, and there were several other smaller ones here. We had a couple of F1s and F0s that kind of jumped up and jumped down um, northwest of Oklahoma City. Another F3 uh, right there, and then a couple of other smaller ones um, to the west but you see a couple also short-lived long ones 
F3 and F4 all in there again from the same tornado outbreak. But of course, the biggest one is going to be right down in here. This was the Bridge Creek, uh, Newcastle, Moore F5. I mentioned it earlier, uh, just to the southwest, right around Bridge Creek. If you can look closely there, let me bring out my yellow telestrator. On the damage survey, uh, there were two areas of F5 damage found. It weakened quote unquote a little bit as it moved uh outside of newcastle so here is newcastle where i'm marking the yellow it weakened to an f2 f3 and then it strengthened again as it moved on the northwest side of moore oklahoma so we talk about these things a lot of times these long track tornadoes cycling how they become strong then they weaken a little bit and then they get strong again and this was certainly in a very good environment unfortunately for this thing to be fueled now the meteorological setup this is extremely important as well and it's called tornado alley for a reason there is a very iconic setup a meteorological feature known as the dry line if you've seen the movie twister you've heard them reference this uh, what the dry line is, it's ba it's it's kind of like a cold front. It's the dividing it's the dividing line between very very warm moist air out ahead of it, of course uh, coming out of the Gulf of Mexico, and then the dividing line between the extremely dry air that is residing in the western side of Texas, western Oklahoma, to the east of the Rockies, and then into the parts of the desert Southwest. You have dew point temperatures in the single digits, teens and twenties out in the dry area. You have dew point temperatures in the 60s and 70s out here so there's a big contrast of moisture uh, the colder air then resides behind the cold front that was slicing through extreme northwest texas and then in new mexico and arizona what makes the dry line so terrible for severe weather events like this is that it helps to induce what we call a capping inversion now you oftentimes hear about the cap leading to a bust, quote unquote, for a severe weather forecast. If the cap is strong, and what basically the cap is, it's a layer of warmer air aloft that prevents the air from rising above it until it gets warm enough to surpass that. In order to get these giant severe weather outbreaks like this, you need to have some kind of cap because you can't have the storms going up all at once. You need to have them, the supercell thunderstorms, be discreet and be isolated. I always say that these storms are kind of selfish. They want all of those ingredients that the environment is providing uh, to for themselves. And when you get several discrete supercells like that, they are not competing with each other for the good environment again good for the tornado bad for the people but there was the dry line again right through western oklahoma and the cells initiated just about right in through here and then drifted off in that direction give or take let me get my telestration off of here as well because that's just the kind of initiation point and it gives uh, also an area to induce what we call low level wind shear so we had winds out of the south and east just like that at the surface. Now we bring in the jet stream energy. We had a very strong jet blasting through the desert southwest. Here it is right, right there. And then over top of this very unstable air mass that is hanging out right here. So any of the storms that explosively erupted right along the dry line were able to take advantage of rolling motion in the atmosphere. And that is induced by southeast winds at the surface and then northwest winds aloft or southwest winds aloft and then eventually turning to northwesterly winds way way up where jet aircraft fly so again a lot of turning in the wind with height that's the wind shear that gets the storm to spin so that was the i mean prime setup for tornadoes and of course to get the strongest tornado ever recorded by wind you pretty much need to have the prime. Now, it doesn't have the record for longest tornadoes or most fatalities. It did, unfortunately, kill 34 people. Just that one tornado, I believe that there were 46 fatalities in total of this uh, tornado outbreak period. But it has the record for the strongest winds ever recorded. Now, I mentioned earlier in the video that, unfortunately, obviously, Oklahoma is in Tornado Alley. But 
the Newcastle Bridge Creek Moore area and Moore, Oklahoma specifically, is unfortunately no stranger to the highest end tornadoes. Of course, uh, back in 2013, there was another EF5 tornado and ju- almost the signature just as strong as it went through the southern side. So right here in red, this red outline, um, that was the tornado that we've been characterizing in this video for the last nine minutes or so. So that was the one that we just spent all that time on. Then in 2003, on the northwest side of Moore again, intersecting the path. Again, this is four years later. A monster F4 tornado crossed paths with the same damage area that the 1999 F5 moved through. And then, if you remember this, back in 2013, uh, an EF5, remember there was an update to the Vegeta scale. We have the enhanced Vegeta scale now. So we had an EF5 tornado start to the west or southwest of Newcastle, in green here and then move on the south side of Moore. So really, unfortunately, Moore over the last 25 years, most of the town has been impacted by a high-end tornado on the upper echelon of, of tornadoes, unfortunately. I know that 25 years later, there are still signs there. Certainly there was the loss of life, um, but you really never recover from something like that. Uh, when you do have that loss of life and that damage, the scars are likely still in the ground there when something like this, that's one of the, um, when the weather service is looking to rate the tornado, the ground scouring is one of those, uh, things that they're looking for in the higher end tornadoes. And certainly this was happening, uh, with that 1999 F5 tornado. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, Thinking of everybody that was impacted by this, of course, again, I mentioned this earlier, people that have interest in the weather certainly know about this day, but I don't want to not include the people that were impacted by this because this was a damaging, deadly, catastrophic tornado, and we are thinking about you guys. We'll catch you soon.